and the world of the Jaredites. Very significant information has come out now on these laughable things in the Book of Mormon that certainly weren't guessable in Joseph Smith's day, any more than city societies in Mesoamerica. If, if one Indian in North America lived in a teepee, all of the inhabitants of the ancient world lived in teepees. That was the assumption in Joseph Smith's day, and it was a wrong assumption. Metal records in stone boxes. That is one solid evidence that has come out now. The first archaeological claims related to the Book of Mormon concerned the purported facts of September 22, 1827, the actuality of metal plates preserved in a stone box. This used to be considered a monstrous tale, but concealed metal records in stone boxes is now a documented old world practice. Stone offering boxes have also been discovered in Mesoamerica. But so far the golden plates are still at large, as we would expect them to be. The angel took them back. Even that concept has now been shown to be understood in the ancient world. Angels do bring heavenly books, let the men and humans read them, and then they take them back. That's not even laughable these days. It may be laughable to critics, but we understand anciently that concept, that philosophical conceptualization, was real to the ancients. The idea of ancient writing. Another fact, obvious, that September morning was that the ancient peoples of the Americas knew how to write, a ludicrous claim for anyone to make in 1827. No one knew the ancient Americans knew how to write in Joseph Smith's day. No one. We now know that of at least six Mesoamerican writing systems that predate the Christian era. Six of them. There's an abundance of riches of this documented archaeological fact about the Book of Mormon. He says that should count for something. It sure should. Page 43. I'm skipping a bit. Page 44, The Arts of War. Now that Maya writing can be read, warfare appears to have been a Mesoamerican pastime. This went against the grain in Joseph Smith's day. Everyone thought they were peaceful people. I can't overemphasize that enough. The picture has changed in favor of the Book of Mormon since Joseph Smith's day to a society of warfare, exactly as the Book of Mormon depicted. The information on warfare in the Book of Mormon is particularly rich, and it provides ample opportunity to check Joseph Smith's luck in getting the details right. The warfare described in the book differs from what Joseph Smith could have imagined. In the book, one reads of fortified cities with trenches, walls, and palisades. Mesoamerican cities dating to Nephite times have been found with all these features. The Book of Mormon mentions bows and arrows, swords, slings, scimitars, clubs, spears, shields, breastplates, helmets, and cotton armor, all items documented for Mesoamerica. Aztec swords were of wood, sometimes edged with stone knives. There are indications of wooden swords in the Book of Mormon. How else could swords become stained with blood? Wooden swords edged with sharp stones could sever heads and limbs and were lethal. The practice of taking detached arms as battle trophies, as in the story of Ammon, is also documented for Mesoamerica. Are you starting to get the picture here? This is important. To say nothing is found in favor of the Book of Mormon is false. And now with this information out and available, it's becoming a lie deliberately taught and ought to be shaming 
those who propound that lie? Have you no truths in your own hearts? Another precise correspondence. This again on page 44. Another precise correspondence is the practice of fleeing to the summits of pyramids as places of last defense and consequently of eventually surrender. Conquered cities were depicted in Mesoamerican by symbols for broken towers or burning pyramids. Mormon records this practice. Other practices of this day, of his day, were human sacrifice and cannibalism, vile behaviors well attested for Mesoamerica. It is also mentioned in the Book of Mormon. Mormon 414, Moroni 9, verses 8 and 10. Those are direct correspondences, folks. Page 45. Yet more. Oh, well, I'm still on page 44. Sorry. The final battle at Camorra involved staggering numbers of troops, and it did, including Nephite battle units of 10,000. Aztec documents describe armies of over 200,000 warriors divided into major divisions of 8,000 warriors plus 4,000 retainers each. One battle involved 700,000 warriors on one side. The Aztec ciphers appear to be propagandist exaggeration. I do not know whether this applies to the Book of Mormon numbers or not, but the numbers are similar. In summary, the practices and instruments of war described in the Book of Mormon display multiple and precise correspondences with Mesoamerican practices and in ways unimaginable to 19th century Yankees. Furthermore, Clark notes on page 45, Mesoamerica is a land of decomposing cities, their pyramids, the towers, their temples and palaces are all items mentioned in the Book of Mormon, but foreign to the gossip along the Erie Canal in Joseph Smith's day. Cities show up in all the right places and date to time periods compatible with the Book of Mormon chronology. That's what archaeology is discovering. That's a perfect fit. Cement houses and cities. One of the more unusual and specific claims in the Book of Mormon is that houses and cities, cities of cement were built in 49 BC in the land northward, a claim considered ridiculous in 1830. As it turns out, this claim receives remarkable confirmation at Teotihuacan, the largest pre-Columbian city ever built in the Americas. Ever. Teotihuacan is still covered with ancient cement that has lasted over 1,500 years. That is a direct correlation. That's not even a maybe or an almost. That's right on. It's interesting how in Joseph Smith's day, the prejudices were against kings and tyrants. And yet, the Book of Mormon peoples had kings who ruled over cities and territories. This goes against the grain of Joseph Smith's day. The last Jaredite king, Coriantumr, carved his history on a stone about 400 B.C., an event in line with Mesoamerican practices at that time. A particular gem in the book is that King Benjamin labored with his own hands, Mosiah 2.14, an outrageous thing for Joseph Smith to have claimed for a king. Kings don't labor with their own hands.